gehört. Cool, thank you. You're welcome. Have a Cheers, and Jean. Oh. oh, the rain's coming in. Good morning. Oh, mm. welcome back to Life in Motion. And I am in the car having just got my Starbucks because I'm asking a question today. I get asked a lot of questions on Instagram and YouTube, and one of them keeps coming up was. Is the Porsche Cayman GTS worth the money? I paid 57-ish thousand pounds for this car a couple of years ago, and a lot of people have asked me, was it really worth the money? How good of a car can it be? So, that is what I'm gonna be answering in this video. So, enjoy. I was leaving Audi and I bought a mini John Cooper Works, which I loved. It was a brilliant car. I had it for a couple of years. I did a good amount of miles on it. Uh, and then I was getting a little bit older and I thought, you know what? I think it's time to look at something different. And I thought a sports car. Um, I did think at one point an RS3, an A45, but I think I just had enough at that point of the hot hatches. So I popped down to a Porsche dealership in Swindon. I met a guy called Jordan just uh, happened through work. I met him. I said, you know, what? I'm going to pop down. I'm being a bit cheeky. So I'm, I don't think I can really buy a Porsche, but let's just see where we get to. Um, I really liked the 718 Porsche. I thought it was a really nice looking car. I had a little bit more tech in it. You can get CarPlay, that kind of thing. So I thought, you know what? If I could get anything, it would be a 718. I went in. I said, I want to spend 400 ish pound a month. What can we do? Long story short, I think I got a bit carried away. I went on test drives and Jordan was great and I really, really liked it. I ended up paying, I think, 480 a month. I put about seven-ish grand in as a deposit, and the car was about 44, 45,000 pounds. So, um, yeah, that's how I got in to a Cayman. Oh, 7,000 RPM this car revs to. It just seems, for a turbocharged car, it just seems, yeah, anyway. Good question. Simply, finance. I didn't have 43-ish, 44,000 pounds to spend then. I didn't then have 57,000 pounds to buy this car, the GTS. And yeah, finance saved me. On both cars, I have financed them. And I've used something called a personal contract plan of, or purchase, a PCP. Um, very simply, if you didn't know, you put a deposit in, you pay a certain amount a month, and at the end, you can either pay the car off can the vehicle back um, or I think refinance something like that um, very simply uh, you get a guaranteed future value on a PCP so if the car's not worth what the finance company in this case Porsche said it would be uh, you can just hand the car back you don't have to pay any, any money to it so it's quite a good way of buying cars it's a very popular way a lot of people do it um, and it's exactly why I bought this car while we stop the other thing with this car is that because Covid drove the price of used cars up I only put in about £3,000 additional deposit, and I think I spent an extra £80, £90 a month. So actually, it was very easy to change from my previous car to this car, even though my previous car was £43,000, £44,000, and this car was just over £57,000. Well, what do you think it was going to be like? 
Do you think it would be unparalleled service? Fantastic quality cars? Perhaps an unbridled level of enjoyment and passion from the sales team, the services team, the management team? Well, yeah, I think it would have been like that too. And not to say that I haven't had that experience because there have been times when I've just really, really enjoyed working with my Porsche dealer in Swindon. But I'm gonna say a very simple thing. Your Porsche experience, if you're going to buy a car, is gonna massive, massively differ if you go to different dealerships. And I would urge you, encourage you, make will you to go and have a look at just some other dealerships around. Don't commit to anything, just go in, speak to someone and just gauge a vibe, gauge what they're like. What, do they want to talk to you? Do they want to help explain things? Do they, know the, do they know the knowledge? Do they have that knowledge in there to tell you what the car's going to do? Because let's be honest, unlike, well, unless you're a car person like me, you might have researched the hell out of a Cayman or whatever car you're looking at. If you haven't, you're going to want someone to tell you, someone that's knowledgeable. So yeah, it can be fantastic. It can also be rather disappointing. I did a video recently where I got a bill of over £3,000 on this very car. Now, I went to a different dealership to Swindon because of the situation I was in. I was not impressed by it. And I think it's just because I was, I went in, I didn't know them, I didn't have a relationship, and I just didn't feel that warm and fuzzy, you're a Porsche customer, thank you very much, Jack, we're gonna help you out. I didn't get that. So, shop around, meet some people, look on forums, ask for advice, drop me a message, comment below, drop me on Instagram, I'll put the link on my screen now, just drop me something and I'll let you know what I like, where I went to and explain it. Yeah, you might think I'm a bit crazy because why on earth would you buy pretty much the same car? I mean, this car has not changed, the GTS is not different to the base came in from the inside, the technology is the same, it all looks very much, well, identical basically. Um, I've got some, it's, not, it's got a GTS interior pack, so Alcantara and carbon fibre and, and leather bits, which is all very nice, but it's pretty much the same place I want to be. And I was a little bit like, hmm, why would I buy the same car oh, for more money when I could just keep my car? Um, but. I was a little bit itchy feet on buying a new car. I wanted to buy something. I had popped to a Jaguar Land Rover dealership and had looked at a F-Type. Again, just side note, I went into Jaguar. I wasn't very impressed with the person there. They didn't know what they were talking about. I knew more about the car. Simple things like what comes to two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive for a V8 F-Type. I didn't like that. And they just said, you're going to be waiting for ages. There's nothing in stock. I was not impressed at all. However, my God, there's a G. -ing. GT, is that a KN Turbo GT behind me? Oosh! Sorry, I'm a bit sidetracked. Yes, you're gonna overtake me. Yes, overtake me. Oh, oh, I like that. Oh, yes. Oh my God, yes! Oh, now, God, I, I uh, KN just hit the mark. The Turbo GT, GT Turbo, whatever it's called. Yes, just, I love that car. Anyway, sorry, sidetracked. But I had itchy feet and I thought, you know what, what should I do to try and curb a bit of this, you know, bubbliness? It's been COVID, so I've been driving the car ish through COVID, did less miles, um, and I hadn't gone on holiday, so I moved out a bit of extra cash lying around. I thought, you know what, I'm going to have to do something before I, well, I actually bought a watch as well, and silly things, and I was like, you know what, what do I want to do? I want to change my car, what should I do? And then... I spoke to someone called Darren Gibson. Now, Darren, if you check out his Instagram, I'll put it on the screen. Um, Darren helps finance, uh, broker finance for uh, new and used cars for anyone, really. I think it's over anything over £20,000, and Darren will finance it. Um, now, Darren has been you know, renowned in the industry, I think, for helping with finance. Um, I've heard of Darren a lot. He does a lot of work on Instagram, if you check it out. Um, and I basically reached out to him and said, Darren, listen, I'm going to be a bit cheeky. I'd really like to work with you on, on the next car I'm thinking of changing what do you think and he was very honest with me and he didn't sugarcoat it he helped explain that actually f-type wise residual aren't that great they don't really finance very well so I said if you basically if you must have an f-type then fine we'll finance it you don't need to he would suggest a Cayman GTS and I was like well Darren I do have a Cayman now and he was like yeah but the GTS is is brilliant 
not only just finance wise, which it is very good residually, it's a brilliant, brilliant car. So I was like, okay, well, anything else? He said, well, maybe a GTS, you know, an AMG GTS. I thought, okay, could do, but ended up a little while later um, with the Cayman GTS. So um, yeah, it, Darren's a really good person. You know, have a chat with him. Um, but that is basically how I went from one Cayman to another. And so we have arrived at the question at the start of this video, which is difficult to answer. It is, and I'll explain why. This car, the Cayman GTS, is arguably the best handling sports car, the best sports car on the market, value for money, absolutely. And I get that. However, arguably, and this is what niggles in the back of my mind, could I have had just as much fun, if not more, if I'd bought something like uh, a Mazda MX-5, as an example. Rear-wheel drive, manual, enough power to kind of, you know, get it sideways or have fun in it, but not enough to, you know, kill you. It's not like, too expensive. I'm not, wouldn't be as worried if, you know, I get a little ding or something in a car park. Whereas with the Cayman, I am worried. I park always away from people. I'm, I don't want to bit it into a hedge and not like a Muppet. So those little things make a big difference. And so many people on Instagram text me and say, Jack, is it really worth the money? You know, it's fifty-seven thousand pounds for this guy. It was used. It wasn't new. I think they're up, you know, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand pounds if you buy one now. Would you? Is it worth it? And you know what? For me, yes, it is worth it. I had the Cayman originally, the base one, and I loved it. And when I bought the this gen, this current one, the GTS, I don't know. Just the the engine, although it's now a two and a half litre, it's got three hundred sixty something horsepower, and um, a little bit quicker than the old one. I don't know. It just it just felt alive and so many cars I drove including the Audi TT RS didn't feel that they felt safe and very usable every day but they didn't feel like a exciting uh, visceral car that the GTS did and, and if I'm honest that made a massive difference and that is why oh, <laughs> I just I love that car, and that's exactly why I was happy with it, why it was worth the value for money. Sometimes you get into cars like this and you just think, actually, they're just a big expensive bit of parts, but for me, it wasn't that. And if you are in the same boat as me and you're looking for a new sports car and you are thinking about buying a Cayman, just don't, don't worry about reaching out. Make sure to comment below uh, or text me on Instagram, and I'm happy to kind of help out and ask any questions, but yeah, I don't know. I just 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 for a second just have a look i mean i don't know i i you know i get in this car every day uh, i drive it every day i've done over twenty thousand miles in it now and i don't i just it's so special whenever i get to you know like a petrol station if i go to like oh sorry if i go to like a petrol station or i go to a car park i always get someone to say i love that color or i what's it like is that is that the gts and i don't know it just it really just works well so that has been it i hope you've enjoyed the video I get a lot of these questions asked all the time, so I thought I'd just do the video and explain to you what I think. But yeah, value for money, I'm really happy. So make sure to subscribe, see plenty of future videos to come. But for now, I'll see you soon. I've got the time.